Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So we're mixing things up today. We're looking at under 16 prospects, and there are 15 of them on this list for the 2020 season. Um, so normally I don't like to cover um, anything below the under 17 age group level, and a lot of you guys have asked me to cover this in the past. Hell, some of you have even asked me to cover under 13 rugby. And the, the whole thing for me is that at the junior levels, I think the guys should be enjoying themselves a bit more, staying out of the spotlight and all the rest of it. Um, and then, you know, once I get into senior rugby, I think uh, we, we sort of can determine who's going to be looking to turn professional and who's still playing it for fun and all the rest of it. And I think, let's be honest, I mean, you know, playing first team rugby in South Africa, um, you are in the public eye anyway. So I, I feel very comfortable about covering that age group. But generally, I try and stay away from... Um, covering anything younger than that but we are in a unique situation here i mean at the end of the day the lockdown and the covid situation um you know we ultimately don't know when the season is going to reopen and if the season is going to reopen now, i don't want to set panic uh, stations out there and all the rest of it but you never know what can happen guys i don't i'm not an oracle i'm not a fortune teller or anything like that but um you know under 16 is a very important age group for the guys it's a very important age group because this is when agencies start approaching them and you sort of uh, start mapping out the future of your rugby career so th these 15 prospects i'm not necessarily saying these are the only prospects in the country there are youngsters that i reached out to um very talented youngsters um, who basically said that, look, they don't want to be in the, sp uh, the spotlight just yet. You know, they're still enjoying their game and all the rest of it. So they decided to give it a skip, which I really respect. Um, and the rest of the guys I've, I've chatted on, yeah, um, you know, they said, yeah, they're more than happy chatting to me and being covered and all the rest of it. And I'm not going to be ranking these guys. So I'm not going to be saying this is the best, second best, third best. So all the names on here are going to basically be in alphabetical order. Um, so first thing I have to do, I have to thank the guys from Peter Fat, Rock Fat Rugby Data. Um, they helped me come up with this list. These guys know their stuff at junior level, guys. They know it very well. Um, they do analytics uh, for various schools around the area, and they do cover a lot of the schools at junior level. So they've got access to the data, and uh, they're good friends of this channel. Um, we're going to be working a lot more closely in the future. It's run by two guys, I know, and Tace, very down-to-earth good guys. Um, and they're not only about um, analytics, they're also about management of players. Um, in terms of uh, giving them sort of tips on improvement and all the rest of it. And Tace was um, a, a professional player before. So um, these guys know their stuff. And uh, yeah, like I said, I just want to thank them for helping me out with this list. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the list. So first up we have Salborn College Aiden Gentle. Now don't let the name fool you. This is no gentle giant, guys. This guy is a bulldozer. Um, he's weighed in at 115 kilograms, 189 centimeters. Played under 13 Craven Week for Border. He's been at Salborn since under 14 level. Played A team all the way. So he bases his game very much off Stephen Kitsoff. Um, very, very strong in the scrum. And definitely, uh, you know, one of the best in his position um, in terms of his ball carrying. And defense, very good as well, guys. Uh, definitely a solid prospect for the future and can't wait to see how he develops. Moving on to the next, and remember this is alphabetical, so don't get your, you know, knickers in a twist over here with rankings and all the rest of it, because, uh, you know, sometimes I get our right, our right parents and old boys sending me messages, so I'm just making that clear now. <laughs> um, so the second player we have is from Great College, is a youngster named Alfonso Isaacs, he's playing at centre, 178 centimeters and weighs in at 82 kilograms. Now, he represented EP um, at Craven Week, um, uh, at under 13 level, also played EP under 12. He actually played Grand Como as well for EP as an under 15. And uh, he was at Marlow at under 15A, and he's just transferred to Great College. 
A very, very good prospect here, guys. Um, you know, the thing with Marlow is that they've, they have they punch above their weight as a rugby school. But at the end of the day, a player of this quality going to grey with their coaching structures and all the rest of it, it's just, it's just going to take his game to the next level. Um, his running lines are just unbelievable. If you want to compare him to a player, um, I'd say Fiki Tower Malaki, a very similar style of play. Uh, he remains very calm under pressure, very mature for his age. Very, very high work rate, guys. This guy's always working, always looking for opportunities. And he punishes Oaks in the tackle. Uh, I mean, this is like a bone crusher over here, a legit bone crusher. Um, and this year's Gray <clears throat> under 16, 18 are looking very good. And this guy's one of the best players in the team. So definitely looking forward to seeing how he develops further. Next up, we have Arno Seal from Gray High School. He's a flanker, and look at that. 185 centimeters and 112 kgs. This is not a typo, guys. This is not a typo. This is a 16-year-old player you're looking at here. Not a prop, a flank, okay? EP under 13, Craven Week, played Gray High School under 14, 8, under 16, A. Good to compare him to. I mean, he's a, a hybrid of Dwan Vermeulen and Peter Steff to toy because he's got an extremely high work rate, but he's very physical. The tackles he puts on Oaks are deadly. They plain and simple, they are deadly. Um, his distribution is excellent. Um, and the thing with him is when he does his carries, he's always crossing the advantage line. I mean, always. I mean, you're talking 99% of the time he's crossing the advantage line. The scary thing is that he's still got room to grow. I mean, that's really scary. Um, he's also a natural-born leader. I think he's captained a lot of teams along the way. And, um, you know, he leads by example. Always uh, first in the mix in the confrontation. And uh, interesting note as well is that he's also a state champion in javelin and discus. So, you know, he's an all-round athlete over here that you're looking at. And certainly a player with a very exciting future ahead of him. Next player is Caleb Abrahams, another great college player. He's a scrummy, 176 centimeters, 71 kgs. So he played Greek was under 13, Craven Week. Um, played as an under 12 and as under 13. Played Greek with sevens. Uh, moved over to Gray College in under 14. Um, then he played Grant Coma last year as an under 15 and is currently in the Gray College under 16A setup. Um, you know, watching him play, I'm very much reminded of a younger, a young uh, Ambrose Papir. You know, I remember the Chasfontein scrum off. But I'm talking like many levels up, guys. I know, I know, I know. It's It sounds like I'm embellishing a little bit here. But trust me when I say it, many levels up. This guy's a very exceptional talent. Um, he's got excellent passing. It's crisp, smooth, excellent passing. Um, if you take a look at his style of play on the field, I mean, he gives everything. I mean, he's really a team man first and foremost. Um, he's always looking to find space and create space. And the snapping runs around the ruck, I mean, it's it's a thing of beauty to see, guys. Um, he's got a very steady boot, make no mistake. But he actually, what I like about his style of play, he tries to use his boot as little as possible. He's always looking to attack. And uh, having a chat with him, he says that this all of this influence and this work rate and everything comes from his old man. He said his old man's been pushing him a lot since a young age because he believes that Caleb can go all the way to the top. And uh, based on what we've seen over here, I think uh, it's a foregone conclusion that if he continues working hard, um, he's at the right school. I mean, you guys know he's at the right school. He's got the talent. So if he can keep his head on his shoulders and continue his development, he's going to go a long way, definitely. Next up on the list, we have a youngster named Janko Skippers. Um, so, in terms of his style of play, you could sort of call him a young Jansurfentein. He's currently playing on the wing, but um, he, he likes to play centre as well. Um, height is 177 centimetres, weight 78 kilograms. Um, he played under 13 Free State Country for two years, and then he moved to Great College. Um, he's played eight team all the way throughout there. And... Um, this guy's got pace, a lot of gas, um, and, you know, with, with a lot of these Afrikaans kids, you know, it's, uh, uh, you, you look at the appearance and you think to yourself, like, uh, you know, 78 kilograms, you know, he's probably got a lot of speed, but maybe, you know, maybe he's not the strongest kid, 
Nah, no, no, no. That's deceiving. These Afrikaans kids are powerful, seriously, and this is another one of them. Um, and the, the thing is with this guy is as soon as he gets an outside gap, he's out. He's gone. You're not going to catch him. He's a deadly finisher. He's amongst one of the deadliest finishers at his age group in the country, guys. Um, he's racking up the tries for fun, and it's definitely going to be exciting to see how he develops in the future. Then we move on to Jacques Uister from Rondebosch. He's a fly-off, weighing uh, at 79 kilograms, uh, height is 177 centimeters. He played under 13 Craven Week for Western Province, uh, played Rondebosch under 14 to under 16A, and was part of the under 15 Western Province elite squad. This guy has got one of the most powerful boots in the country. Okay, apparently on a bad day, this guy can hoof at 50 meters. Um, but he's, you know, he doesn't just rely on the power of his boot. Um, he, he likes kicking into space. He likes probing the opposition. Very, very good at his tactical kicking and a very versatile player as well. Loves to open up space, create the gap. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to see how this guy develops. He's definitely a very exciting uh, prospect for the future. Moving on to the next, we have Jean Small from Paul Boys. He's playing hooker, 174 centimeters, 84 kgs. As a Western Province under 13 Craven Week rep. Uh, moved to Paul Boys in under 14, where he's represented the A team since. Um, now, in terms of his style of play, Think something along the lines of, of Asafa Amua or Bongi Umbonambi. Um, so the thing is, he's not the tallest hooker, right? So what he does is he makes up for it with his physicality. He's a very physical player. Definitely a modern day hooker. And the thing that's very interesting about him is that he played as a loose forward for most of his junior career. He was an eighth man. So he's been able to adapt his game to become not only a key player in the hooker position, but to act as a fourth loose forward. Um, he, this guy loves the physical game. I mean, he really likes to get stuck in. And uh, Paul boys are looking extremely strong at under-16 level. And this is one of their leaders. So very exciting to see how he develops in the future. Next up, we have Junior Stoltz from Poor Rus. So he's a hooker as well, 180 centimeters and 86 kgs. Um, he was an under 13 Craven Week rep for Western Province. Uh, played 18 for Borland in under 14, under 15 level and just recently moved to Poor Rus. Um, and he's part of the uh, Western Province elite squad. And um, you got to think to yourself here yeah, about in terms of a style of play, you got to think of something between a Skulk Brits and a Jacques Huisson type player. Um, he's got a great reading of the game. Um, he's got a real rugby brain. I think that comes from his old man teaching him along the way. I mean, uh, you know, what better mentor to have. Um, and uh, another strength of his is uh, he's amazing in the offload. Um, you, could, you can basically look at this guy as a young bull. I mean, he loves to get stuck in. I mean, uh, you could take a look at his highlight reel um, on YouTube. Just search for his name. You'll, you'll see it come up. You can see this guy likes to turn to opposition, loves the physical game. Um, and I, I really feel like at school level, I really feel like this is like the next Jacques Huisson, that type of player. Um, his line out throwing is exceptional, way beyond his years. Sometimes at this level, it takes a bit of time to get into the groove of things, but he's just a natural. Um, and generally, he's in force of the team. So you must definitely expect to see some uh, some real physical play for uh, from him for this year. Next on the list, we have from Paul Boys, uh, Matthew Fick. He's a flanker. Um, he's weighing in at 84 kilograms, 182 centimeters. And, uh, I mean, he's got a very, very um, colorful career. I mean, under 12 Western Province and a 13 Western Province Craven Week. Paul Boys, a team at all levels. And uh, he's part of the Western Province high performance squad at under 15 level and at under 16 level, guys. Um, this guy is extremely powerful. I mean, um, this this might be, uh, you know, for those of you a bit younger, um, you, you probably won't remember this name, but there was a flanker from Greyhound back in the day called Kuwen Frisler. Um, he, he, had, he was unlucky with his senior career, but um, he was one of the best ever school rugby flanks um, in the country. I mean, he was outstanding. And Matthew Fick is on that level. Um, the guys, they're almost identical in their, uh, their style of play. I mean, you, you know, they're very physical. Uh, they like to get stuck into things and also 
brilliant at the breakdown um, and definitely a team man as well. I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to see how this guy develops. I mean, uh, he, if you take a look at his frame and his build, I think by the time he reaches under 18 level, he's going to be an absolute monster. I think he's going to take some serious names in the future. Next on the list, we have a very exciting player, Mbasa uh, Makupela. He likes to be known as the chief. And uh, he looks up to Sia Kulisi as a player, and he very much styles his game on Sia Kulisi. Now, this guy's extremely powerful, guys. I mean, he's one of the strongest uh, players um, in the province in terms of his physical strength. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant to link in the forwards and backs well. Um, I've just taken a look at some of his video plays um, that the guys from Plitter Fat managed to send me. And this guy's an exceptional talent guy. The guy's a very, very special player. Um, in terms of um, one of his major talents is also running in the wide channels. Um, and his strength allows him to always cross advantage lines. So what that does is gives his team momentum. And his teams teams are generally always on the front foot when is playing because... Like I said, he's always crossing the advantage line. He's always getting stuck in physically and, um, you know, leading from the front. And um, you can see that he was under 15 a captain at Paul Riss. Um, and th th this is a case of another player that if you take a look at his frame and his build, um, when he falls out um, at, in terms of school level under 18, he's going to be a monster. He's going to be a very, very scary prospect at that stage. And then next up we have... Now, I've got a big call to make here. I've got a big call to make here. This guy's uh, name is Mitle Mantanise. And uh, I've, I've, I've chatted to some scouts about this guy. Okay. And here comes a big call. The scouts are telling me this guy's better than Ku and Bosch was at the same age. This, hands down. There's not even a hesitation. They're saying that age for age, he's better than Ku and Bosch was. Those are big words. But if you take a look at his play... It's not far wrong, guys. It's not far wrong. Um, he, he's like a mini burden Barrett, if you want to say it like that. Um, his running lines are exceptional. Um, he's got a he's got a like a really good head on his shoulders. Very mature as a player. Um, very strong in defence and uh, the way that he attacks space. It's just a beautiful thing to see. So just keep a close eye on this guy. Because we're looking at like an elite level, like a five-star prospect over here. And if he continues to develop, and uh, Gray is also a great rugby school. And I think he's going to be, you know, managed very well and very carefully there. Um, so definitely looking forward to see how he develops. And if he continues on this development, I think we've got a very exciting player on our hands for the future. Next up, Safiso Magwaza. I've spoken about this young tank before. Um, he's currently at Monument. Prop 182 centimeters, 105 kgs. So he was under 12 Falcons, under 13 Falcons. Uh, he played at Craven Week, moved over to Monument, under 14, under 15A. And then he played Grand Coma last year for the Lions as a 15 year old, as a 15 year old prop. I mean, that says a lot. So, in terms of his strengths, um, I think his handling is just out of this world. I mean, amazing hands, um, especially for a big man. Um, carries very well, always crossing the advantage line. He's also a very versatile player. I mean, normally when you think of a prop, you box him into a certain category and a certain style of play. And I think Safiso, uh, you know, basically checks all the boxes that you can think of in terms of forward play in general. Um, very solid in the scrum as well. Very good reader of the game. So he styles his game on uh, Lizo Kovoka. Uh, you see, got the click right there. This white man can talk. Um, and, um, you know, the thing is, is that um, he's been trained by none other than Heiko Pullman right now um, in terms of the scrum. And, that, you know, this channel is a big fan of Pullman. We've been talking about him for a long time. One of the best scrummages in the country. Powerful player. And he's mentoring this youngster. So with Heiko Pullman mentoring him, and you know Pullman's work rate as well. He's one of the hardest workers in the country. If that rubs off onto Safiso properly, you're going to see an absolute monster once he reaches the open level. I think we're looking at a very special player here, guys. Then we move on to Shah Jahan de Jong. I mean, does that not just sound like a superstar player's name? <laughs> I just love it, eh? So he's a pole boy right now as a center. Um, 180 centimeters, 76 kgs. 
Uh, great playing history under 13 Craven Week um, for Western Province, played under 13 Western Province Sevens, uh, then played under 14 A Durbanville before transferring to Paul Boys. And again, guys, all due respect to Durbanville, great school, but you know, you're transferring to Paul Boys, you're transferring to the lead schools with elite coaches, playing with elite players, and it's good for a player's uh, future trajectory. Um, and it shows, I mean, he's just been named part of the Western Province Elite squad as well. So you can basically look at him as a Sonny Bull Williams type player. Okay, now, right now, one of the best um, offloaders in schoolboy rugby is without a doubt Mambo Mkize from Westville. And I see the same thing um, in De Jong. I see the same thing. I see a player that's completely unselfish, cares more about the team than himself, and is always looking to get his teammates into space rather than cover himself in glory. And, you know, saying with saying that, he's a devastating attacker. I mean, you, <laughs> go into DigiTV and watch some games, guys, and see what he does to his opposition. I mean, he bounces plays for fun. And he's offloading probably amongst the best in the country, if not the best in the country in his age group. Loves the physical side of the game. Um, and he loves to punish the Oaks with the tackles. I mean, this this guy doesn't tackle purely for defensive reasons or tactical reasons. I mean, what I like about him is he's got that natural instinct where he's going to tackle you and make sure that you're going to think twice about running into him the, uh, a second time. Very, very big fan of this youngster and uh, just another player with a bright future. Moving on to the next player, we have Slubbert Martins. Now... This is, again, not a typo, guys. We're looking at a youngster here, 201 centimeters, 2 meters tall, 101 kgs. Played Paul Jim under 14, under 15, under 16 now, which is not mentioned here. Apologies for that. Been part of the Western Province system for a young age. And in my opinion, what you're looking at here is a young Bucky's boy too. Very, very physically imposing. He loves to take on all comers. And, uh, you know, he doesn't stand back for anyone, guys. He, he really likes the physical side of the game. Loves to get stuck in the rucks. Loves to clear players out of the rucks. Um, very solid in defense as well. And I think in terms of his line-up play, absolutely brilliant. And one part of his play that's not fully appreciated as well is his carry. And I think he's an extremely solid carrier. <clears throat> then we move on to the last player. And this is definitely not least. This is a player to really, really keep your eyes on as well, guys. His name is Zukisani Tom, and he goes to Grey Har. He's currently an eighth man, 183 centimeters and 91 kgs. Um, he played board under 13 Craven Week for two years, been part of the Grey Har system since under 14, under 14, under 15, and under 16, A. Eh? And uh, what a player this guy is, guys. What a player. He's an absolute monster. Um, the combination of him and Arna Seal is going to be devastating this year when the season picks up, if the season picks up. And I think that will go into first team level next year as well. I've got no doubt him and Arno will probably go straight into the first team next year. Um, there's just too much talent with these two. And I think um, what I'm seeing with uh, Zukasani and Arno is uh, a Jacques Huisson and Jared Taylor situation where the two of them will have come up from you know the junior levels all the way to the top levels together because their styles complement each other so well. You know, Arna's got that physically imposing side and Zuki Sani's got that um, you know that X factor in terms of um, being all over the field and absolutely harassing opponents and continually um, you know bothering people at the breakdown. So if you want to look, I mean, this is Sia Kulisi's heir to the throne, so to speak. He's a grey boy, just like Sia was. And I think um, uh, we're going to definitely remember him in the future in the same sort of uh, breath as, uh, you know, Sia Kulisi was at school. Both exceptional players, both monsters. And, um, you know, the nice thing about this youngster as well is he's a hell of a humble player, despite all his talent. So definitely looking forward to seeing how he develops. And um, definitely has a bright future in the game. Okay, so that's the entire list over there, guys. Um, if you've got any other players you'd like to add, just mention them down below. Um, like, I, like I said, um, I'm not, I'm, these guys aren't being ranked. I'm just mentioning some players that I really rate highly and the guys from Tetrafat to help me find as well. And uh, yeah, I look forward to your comments and opinions below, guys. Have a fantastic week further.